while preparing this presentation, I uh, casually I got into a page, a web page that uh, uh, discussed. You see the image on the left. It was just the, a screenshot that I made, and it talks about all the different. Uh, it's a vocabulary related to video games, which is not uh, uh, at all. Uh, I mean, it's not comprehensive and it has some two probably 100 200 terms and even if i'm familiar with the environment since uh, a few decades already most of the terms are very new for me and uh, on the right there is the term that describes me uh, regarding the general semantics i am I'm a newbie, something that I, I somewhat really started now with a uh, couple of years about uh, knowing more about general semantics. And so what I'm trying now is to give some uh, hints, some ideas about this word, which is, or, which is ubiquitous, the, the, the word of video games. And for example, yes, uh, there is this quote, uh, it's so, I mean, the, the world of video games is so um, all around us in the last, uh, for the last decades, that we probably, we do not even know what is, uh, that it is so much around us. Good luck in trying to find the, who was the first guy to uh, say this, uh, this quote. I do not know. I think I found this. Yes, it goes back even to Confucius. Uh, and so from David Foster Wallace, from the beginning, uh, McLuhan, Einstein, uh, Bernard Shaw, Proust, Marcel Proust, uh, Confucius. And uh, I think that this is also a problem for us uh, because uh, um, the fact that uh, we do not know very well this environment because we are deep into it. Uh, it's also one of its main problems because uh, uh, it is something that uh, hampers our ability to comprehend it completely. And um, so the thing is that uh, uh, the vocabulary, the language that we, that we know is something that it's uh, almost, uh, as we said, as I showed before, that terms it's almost ex exotic and exoteric it's something that people from the inside they do know and uh, people from outside they just puzzles about what these people are talking but uh, the language is not only the words used in uh, in this environment but it's also the for example the visual this is a whole other discourse that we could probably make but we don't have the time it's not also the the visual uh, vocabulary but also the technique uh, behind it uh, and uh, also all the other aspects and i show briefly the thing what i'm talking about for example i think that uh, okay uh, we are all very well familiar with two with these two images one uh, on the left, it refers to a very famous film from 1977. And on the right, this is probably one of the most iconic video games. Uh, and it uh, got in the, um, it was made in 1978. The thing is here that uh, uh, very few people probably know about is that uh, if we think about uh, uh, the economics of the video games, uh, the movie on the right made some, his uh, box office was something a little less than 500 millions, uh, 4486 million, if I'm not wrong. And on the right, the, the video game Space Invaders, made by 1982, uh, more than two billion dollars. And we can consider that two billion dollars was made in quarter because you played it in the arcade games uh, in the arcades. With just a classic quarter of dollar, while uh, the tickets for the movies for uh, at the time I think I found it was about two dollars and twenty-five. So you can do the math about uh, which was more um, 
can say uh, ubiquitous and uh, how much people played at this game and how much it enter our popular culture okay okay and um, at the time we can say that probably most of the imagery and the language the visual language of the of the cinema which has been codified since many years i mean it had uh, more than a century for scholars for critics for everything to define a vocabulary for for the cinema and this is something I think that I think it still lacks in video games and uh, the cinema has uh, the video games at the time acquired a lot of things from cinema the, the, the visuals the vocabulary the visual vocabulary of the, of the movies but then uh, something something different happened I mean uh, most of the things most of the vocabulary the visual vocabulary of the video games in the last 20 years have gone back into the cinema so for example this is an image from a famous movie from of two years ago which is ready player one which talks about uh, virtual reality and a guy that uh, basically lives in a world uh, made of re in a virtual reality which to him is way better than his uh, uh, real life and uh, this image Which also talk in the uh, in the story, this guy uh, has to pass a sort of test, uh, and uh, which is like uh, okay, what you can see in a common today today's video game, but to pass it, uh, he discovers a layer, another probably we can say another language that it is beneath the uh, the actual uh, word game. So he beats the game just because uh, he understands that there is a, a different layer. And these layers is something uh, that we can find also uh, in, um, in today's world. I mean, uh, okay, this is science fiction, whatever, but uh, uh, already people are uh, passing a lot of time in, in, uh, in virtual worlds especially since the last decade there is a huge there was a huge research and um, a lot of money has been put into all these uh, um, virtual world visors and uh, goggles and whatever and uh, so it's even more easy to see that people are escaping their reality this layer this physical layer that we can call and that we have to spend more time into a virtual layer or whatever we can uh, we can call it and uh, for example this is already player one was uh, two years ago it was uh, made by spielberg and it was based on a very famous book by ernst klein uh 10 years before there was another game based uh, sim with similar ideas called the gamer and i think this year also another movie is coming out called the free guy about a banker uh, a bank teller that discovers his uh, a character in a, in a video game and so you you can all see that uh, these things uh, i mean the most of the, a lot of the ideas that are uh, uh, that hollywood i mean the, the movie industry is having that are based from uh, from video games and uh, but the reality, also another thing that I'd like to add, since we are discussing the visuals here, is that basically the video games are an extension of TV or television. They were created in 1948. A guy named Ralph Baer wanted just to add something more fun to television. So we can also say that the language that video games used and took from they took uh, they took, took it from the television. And uh, so we have all probably all the discourse that uh, people like Postman, McLuhan, uh, and made about it. And uh, so we are probably using still that grammar, this limited grammar from uh, from TV. And this reality is still again we have something that has been shaped the video games 
reality that we see today about virtual reality, all the kids that are playing on, um, on video games, they are still glued on consoles and on mobile TVs, on, on mobile phones and smartphones. This reality is still shaped from something that we had from the, the 40s. And um, as I said, the cinema had decades to discuss this language, this grammar, and to find the antibodies for it. And video games did not. So it's something that, again, it permeates all of our reality, and we, we are not completely aware of it. And this is uh, this uh, woman is called Shudu. She's a, a very famous model. Uh, the last couple of years, uh, she's appeared in most of catwalks, and she and in the famous campaigns for um, for various brands. And she also presented, I think, the last in 2019, the last BAFTA awards. Uh, the fact is that uh, she's not real. Uh, she's uh, uh, she's completely digital, and uh, there is a guy. The guy that's invented her, I think, also uh, invented the first uh, um, digital model agency. And uh, I do not know how many people can tell if she's real. I mean, okay, um, give me the, 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 the picture, which is probably is not very good, but how many people can tell the difference between the, her and to realize that she's not, she's not real. And uh, these things also uh, have other um, implications and we can still talk for example about the workforce the, i mean what we happen to labor uh, and but okay it's not the point here but uh, this um, this imagery it's something that you already i mean a lot of gamers this kind of uh, perfect bodies perfect face it's something that uh, comes uh, and it's in, in the video games since many years. So it's not something, uh, it's not anything new for, some, for anything new for someone who is uh, um, a frequent, uh, frequent gamer or a habitual gamer. Basically, so what it is uh, that I'm talking about is a sort of heads up. I mean, it's, um, I think that it's, uh, um, the field is still it's um, all around us and and uh, we are lacking for probably the, uh, the tools uh, to um, to understand this phenomenon completely and to make it understand for example to our younger generation which are completely prone to it and this is something you see every day you just go to the restaurant as I did last night at pizzeria with my wife and there is, was one kid family friends and uh, he was completely glued to his uh, switch nintendo switch and his uh, mobile phones uh, with uh, and he was playing two things almost at the same time and uh, okay it's a language that is spoken by all the kids probably and a lot of people which is internalized but probably not understood 